There are a lot of ways to power your project. In fact, previously I made a whole video about this topic. In that video, I touched briefly on switch mode power supplies, but I didn't get the chance to dive deeply into that topic. My name is Zach and I'm the bite-sized engineer. In this video, I'm gonna talk about buck converters, which are a type of switch mode power supply. Unlike linear regulators that shed their excess voltage as heat, buck converters switch their supply voltage on and off very quickly to adjust their output voltage. They typically use a feedback circuit to vary the duty cycle of that switching to adjust the output voltage. With buck converters, you can take a whole range of input voltages and regulate them down to a fixed output voltage in a really efficient way. The details of this process are really interesting and informative, so let's dive in. Let me start by describing the problem we're trying to solve. Let's say I have a 36 volt source voltage and I need to power my 12 volt load. I can add a switch in series. When the switch is closed, however, the load is gonna see 36 volts, which we can't have. But if I open and close that switch, the average voltage that the load sees will be less than 36 volts. Let's say, for example, I close the switch for one second and then I open it for two seconds. So the switch is closed one third of the time, which means on average, my load will see one third of the input voltage. In this case, that would be 12 volts. Unfortunately, we can't leave our circuit like this because when the switch is open, there won't be any current flowing to our load. So what if I add a capacitor in parallel with my load? That way, when the switch is closed, it will slowly charge up the capacitor, and as the switch opens, my capacitor will provide a voltage to my load. The capacitor will do a good job of opposing that quick change in voltage, but to complete the low-pass filter, I really need to add an inductor in series. The inductor will oppose changes in current, and the capacitor will oppose changes in voltage. The opening and closing of the switch creates a square wave, but the low-pass filter turns that into something more of a constant DC voltage. There's still a big problem with this circuit, however. I would have to open and close the switch really fast in order for the low-pass filter to be effective. Not to mention my finger would get really tired of opening and closing that switch, so I'm going to replace the switch with a MOSFET. The MOSFET can be controlled using a microcontroller or a 555 timer or some other component. When the MOSFET is closed, current will flow through the inductor and capacitor. Both of those components will store energy in their magnetic and electric fields respectively. Here's where this circuit presents another problem. Once the inductor has energy stored in its magnetic field and the MOSFET opens, that current has nowhere to go. The current will want to flow back through the MOSFET, which will cause it to be destroyed. Fortunately, the solution is pretty simple. I can just add a diode into the circuit here, which provides a path for the current to flow when the MOSFET is open. You can adjust the amount of time the MOSFET is closed versus open, this is also called the duty cycle, in order to adjust the output voltage. To make this a closed loop system, whatever's controlling the duty cycle of that MOSFET needs to know what the output voltage is. Let's say I'm using a microcontroller. I can use that feedback loop to determine what the duty cycle needs to be set in order to get a specific output voltage. By using a buck converter instead of a linear regulator, you can get efficiencies upwards of 80 or 90% as opposed to like 30 or 40% of a linear regulator. This buck converter design is called an asynchronous buck converter because it uses a diode to conduct electricity when the MOSFET is off. If you want to improve efficiency even further, you can replace the diode with another MOSFET, making it a synchronous buck converter. The synchronous buck converter has many advantages over the asynchronous topology. It may seem like this is a lot of work to include in your circuit, but the reality is chip manufacturers have already done all of the hard work. If you go on the DigiKey website and search buck converter, you'll find hundreds of chips that are ready to use with just one or two additional components. In fact, here is a circuit board that I designed using an LM2678 buck converter. It takes an input voltage from 8 volts up to 40 volts and will output a fixed voltage. You can also get the version of the chip that has an adjustable output voltage. Hopefully this video helped you understand buck converters just a little bit more and got you excited about including them in your next project. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Size Engineer. I look forward to seeing you next time.